Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Phil Nitto. I'm a comic artist who works for Marvel Comics, and today I'm Black Widow for you. Um, hope you enjoy it. I'm just going to kind of start from scratch and take you through my process and talk about, you know, what I do in comics and how I draw comics and whatnot, and uh, hope you enjoy it. Um, Okay, so here I'm set up digitally. That's how I usually do most of my work. I just have my uh, phone camera pointed at the second screen to show my uh, process here. Um, I'm working on an iMac with a Cintiq tablet that I'm actually drawing on. And I'll just start uh, roughing in the shape of her head here. And I just do it like real loose, just, just, you know, almost the scribble of just the different shapes. And then I tighten it up in layers over that um, using kind of like a red color pencil brush here. If I was doing this on paper, I would be using like a, a red color pencil and getting it started that way. Um, I actually kind of started using the uh, the color pencils as a process when I was, um, I worked at Disney Animation a long time ago, back in the, from between uh, the Lion King days and Lilo and Stitch. And we used to, um, it was all traditional pencil on paper. So we would use, um, colored pencils to rough in the shapes and then go in with graphite. And now everything's computer, which actually is great for me doing comics because it allows me to draw that much quicker because I do about 20 pages a month and that's, I do all my own coloring and inking and whatnot. So uh, yeah, it's usually about an average of one issue a month. Um, I'll work from a script and kind of just start like this, roughing out the different pages according to what's in the story. And if anybody out there is looking to become a better artist or, you know, trying to get better so they can get a job in comics, um, I highly recommend just doing a lot of these kind of just loose thumbnails, uh, gesture drawings of uh, figures. It's um, when I was in art school, uh, we did tons of gesture drawing from live models and that it's, it's all practice. Like it's, you can only get better if you're just drawing more and more. I mean, I look at stuff that I drew, you know, 10, 15 years ago, and I just, yeah, <laughs> I don't even want to see it. But, um, but yeah, I mean, you can see, you can see your work getting better with the practice. And get a, trying to do kind of a, a long horizontal action pose, show it so it shows up better on the screen. For YouTube and everybody. Um, the nice thing about working digitally is you have all the digital tools that you can just erase and resize and a lot of the the undo tool which is amazing. So you don't have to like constantly work over mistakes. Okay so that's it's pretty good there in general. And then what I usually do is just, this is on one layer and I'll kind of lighten that up, adjust the opacity. So then I can go back in and start doing a tighter line drawing. And I may do this two or three times, depending on how happy I am with the, the way the drawing's coming out. And um, yeah, the brush, uh, the brush I'm using is actually the um, the Kyle Webster 
uh, animator's pencil. It was um, kind of based off the old uh, black wing graphite, the, the lead, the true lead pencils that they used to have that give you such a rich black line. But um, yeah, the, if, if you're looking for like great natural media stuff, the um, Kyle Webster's brushes for Photoshop are amazing. I'd, I've been using them since you would just kind of buy them separately from his uh, Gumroad site. But uh, yeah, they've been immensely helpful in terms of digital art for me. Okay, so I'm going to go in and start trying to tighten up her face. Um, so yeah, I chose Black Widow. Um, like right now, I've been working for Marvel for ooh, probably about 12 years now. Yeah, or so. And um, I'm currently drawing uh, the Cable series with my pal Jerry Duggan. He's writing it and doing a lot of the Star Wars covers. But I, um, I'm probably most well known for my Black Widow run between 2012 and 2014 that I did with Nathan Edmondson. It was, um, I think, 18 issues or so, almost two years. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I I loved working on Natasha and on the book, and um, it was a real joy to kind of do something with a character that hadn't, I mean, she's been around for a while, like a, you know, long time old-time Marvel character, but in the comics, they hadn't been doing much with her at the, at the moment when we launched the series, so it was a nice opportunity to kind of put my own spin on her. I didn't change her too drastically. Um, I just kind of kept the same Black Widow suit and the general look. I, I, I always liked the sleek look of her and didn't want to put too much like make it too busy and my style is also I come from an illustration background in general so I was just kind of looking to do like a, a simple 60s almost modesty blaze type thing and um, yeah I was lucky enough they uh, they let me do that so so I'm just trying to get the face right here So you can see. Oh, didn't want to do that. Sorry. Okay. There we go. Just trying to get the framing right for all of you people watching on the interwebs. And yeah, like I said, I um, I've been. Working for Marvel for about 12 years, I've been doing comics in general for almost 20 now. Before that, I um, worked in animation for 10 years at Disney, and I've always been drawing. Like, I, I always sat down in front of Saturday morning cartoons when I was, you know, like five years old with a pencil and paper and just constantly drew all the time and went to Ringling School of Art and Design in Florida. And from there, I got an internship at Disney and went to work there on Lion King after, uh, after college and then just kind of stayed there until uh, 2002, where I ended up leaving to just do comics full time. And that was, I had just finished Lilo and Stitch and had been doing comics at the same time for about two years and just realized at that point I was having more fun doing comics and they were wrapping up traditional animation. So I left to, do, to just do comics full time and been doing this ever since. But uh, yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's a very, very uh, creative, um, being able to just kind of like sit around and 
create this art and have uh and have it get out to the marketplace like fairly soon. I mean, you know, there's will usually work a, a few months in advance just in terms of schedules and printing and stuff. But, you know, animated movies you work on for two years before anybody ever sees them. So there's there's a much quicker gratification in terms of uh, comics, which is nice. Okay. Yeah, so this is just doing like a, a somewhat tighter, more detailed line art over this. And this is pretty much how I would pencil, like digitally pencil a comic issue. Um, I may do, like I'll show you, I'll, I'll try to add some color into this and, you know, kind of show you how I would approach a more painted style comic. Um, if I'm doing like a traditional inking style, like I've done in the past on several books, like especially the Star Wars ones, I would take this drawing, you know, kind of a rough drawing like this, and then work in Clip Studio, which I would go ahead and then digitally ink on top of that to do kind of a more traditional comic style but still keep it all digital. Um, it's just uh, much easier in terms of the, the workflow and if there's any changes. And, and since I do all the coloring and inking myself, it's, it's a little more work per month per issue. So I, I try to streamline the process as much as I can. Yeah, when I was uh, designing, like I said, I was trying to keep her, you know, somewhat simplified and streamlined in terms of her look. Um, her face, I kind of like I was, you know, wasn't trying to get too exact with a certain likeness. Um, I knew I didn't want her super pixie like or anything. Um, you know, uh, harsher features in terms of uh, just my uh, mental image of the character. And then I was, uh, I just happened to be going through my, uh, my iTunes library and came across an old uh, Francoise Hardy album. And she was a French pop singer who was a, uh, really big in the 60s and she just had kind of like a a very hard edged look that but still you know feminine and I was like oh well that's that could be a you know a great little kind of touchstone for for the look that I was going for so I kind of always had you know a few photos of her to just kind of like key off of in terms of designing my version of Natasha and at that point, I mean, Scarlett Johansson had already been playing her in the movies a bit. And I didn't want to, you know, start making it look just like her because none of the other characters had been kind of copying the MCU versions. So I wanted to stay away from that. But at the same time, like, I, I like the, the fact, like, I added two beauty marks to my version of uh, Natasha and it was mainly like you know kind of a, a little nod to the um, to Scarlett Johansson's version but at the same time I always thought it was a nice little trick where in different occasions in the book if she was in disguise I'd always still have like kind of the the little two two moles that would kind of signify that it was her. I mean, obviously in real life, she, she'd want to <laughs> not be recognized for anything, but I just thought it was like, would be a cool visual trick to kind of do that in terms of um, a comic book character. So that's kind of how that originated. Um, okay, so 
So that's a pretty um, good drawing there. And let's see. Okay. I'll do one more. Do just the one more pass over it, tightening it up, like in the face and stuff, and then I'll go in and do some coloring on top of it. I apologize if I go silent for a moment. I'm not used to talking constantly while uh, <laughs> while working. So I usually just uh, listen to music or watch movies. So this is all all very new as much as anything is these days. Um, I hope you're all staying safe and sane and. Hopefully this is a nice little treat to have something to watch. If I was doing this traditionally, I would just be kind of taking an eraser and rubbing this all down a little bit between each pass. Um, since, you know, I, there's not like a an opacity slider for a paper, but this kind of gets across the same feel. Yeah, so um, like I said, Black Widow was between 2012 or so and 2014. And since then, I've gone on to do uh, different, a lot of Star Wars, which has always been fun. Um, still do a bunch of covers for those. I'm currently doing, you mentioned uh, Cable with Jerry Duggan and... The first issue came out right before everything locked down, but I believe there's going to be a second printing of the first issue coming out. And um, I have one through four actually done, so those will be shipping, I believe, starting end of July. I'm not sure about the exact timing, but I know that they're done and ready to go, so... So please, if you can, you know, make it out to your local comic shop, pick some of those books up, or you know, anything else that you may uh, enjoy reading. Kind of keep those folks in business. And um, yeah, I uh, I come from an illustration background, like I said, and I never really, I read comics here and there growing up, but I was all like, I was pretty much just into drawing Star Wars. So that, I mean, it's it's been very, a childhood dream come true to be actually working on so much Star Wars stuff lately. But um, in terms of style, I never really had like a comic style, which was actually good kind of breaking in to comics because I was, I had my own thing going, which was easier. I mean, pigeonholed me a bit to begin with, but uh, I was at least able to be kind of unique and, you know, editors would seek me out for certain characters and jobs like Black Widow. So um, that definitely helped. Yeah. I'm going to turn her head a little bit here. The magic of Photoshop here. And I'll just tilt it, get, change the angle there. Okay. 
make this neat. Yes, this is all stuff that's very nice to be able to do digitally, so I'm not constantly erasing and trying to redraw stuff. I don't know if I want to risk changing it all. One of the giant benefits to digital art. Now I'm using, um, yeah, I should say, I'm using uh, Photoshop, uh, the latest version of Photoshop. Um, I do use Procreate quite a bit on my iPad, especially if I'm on the go or traveling or something. And uh, yeah, they have, uh, there's just some great tools and the iPad Pro with the Apple Pencil is just, I mean, it really is magical in terms of the portability. But at home, like my, my daily setup is a 27 inch iMac, which is, this is what's filming the screen. And then I have a 16 inch Cintiq Pro that I use for my actual graphics tablet. Oops. Yeah, I mean, you may think like, oh, well, it doesn't look that much cleaner or detailed, but I'm just trying to finesse certain areas and Especially once I go in with some of like the colors, you'll see that I, I mean, in this kind of technique, I'm leaving some room. So when I actually, I'm almost painting on top of it when I do the colors. So it, it, I'm not looking at, looking for it to be super exact. Sure, it's in frame there for everybody at home. And like I was saying, in, in terms of practice and you know, getting better. Um, a great little trick. I always tell people, I mean, not a trick, but just a good process of learning is to go through and take a magazine, you know, like the, the, some kind of thick fashion magazine or really anything just, you know, with a bunch of people in it and just go page by page and pick out one thing, one person or, you know, one image off that page to draw. It doesn't have to be, you know, some masterpiece. It doesn't even have to be that finished. But just, just go through and, you know, practice drawing, like, different things. And it really, like, I can't stress enough how much just drawing over and over really does make you better. Okay, so I'll see that. Okay, so... I'm gonna keep that as kind of like my final drawing. Actually, hold on. Let's change that leg just a little. Maybe, how does that look? And I'll just go back. Oh, ta-da, okay, perfect. Sorry. I <laughs> Yeah, I, um, you're seeing the full process here, folks. Uh, yeah, there's, I mean, especially digitally, there's so much stuff that I go back and forth on and will do. I mean, especially when it comes to poses, I will do sev several iterations of just trying to get it right. But I don't, you know, I could spend the next 20 minutes trying to finesse this. But that's good enough for what we need today. Okay. Okay, so there's the drawing. And then in my Photoshop layers, 
I'll click that drawing layer to multiply. And then I'll start putting some colors behind it. And I usually start with a kind of a just a basic kind of a neutral color. And then we'll just fill that in. Oh, let's get that little on the side. I can see quick. There. Okay. And then I'll then I just kind of just start um just blocking in the colors. Just very simple, whatever, you know, almost like a coloring book. Kind of whatever basic color I think that the character is going to end up being. This is pretty, this is essentially the, the technique I use when I do cover art and the painted comic interiors. Although, usually if I'm doing like multiple pages on interior books, I'll do a tighter line drawing and actually use Clip Studio to do uh, color flats where you would just take the paint bucket tool and click on the different areas and shapes and that fills it in much quicker because it would just take too long to try to do all of this by hand. But simple things like this, like, you know, standalone images or just quick ones. I find it to be okay to just kind of color it in all like this. skin tone here and I'm just picking very basic just whatever like rudimentary basic colors for her um, the hair and the skin the suit I mean the suit's gonna be pretty much black anyway but I'm not too worried about shades and tints and what not lighting at this point because that with Photoshop I just kind of do that in layers over using like multiply and screen and then the color layer which I'll show you yeah another thing that I switched up on her when I uh, when we started doing the Black Widow book is traditionally she had had gold wrist gauntlets and um, like a gold belt with the little logo on it and I just figured well I'll you know <laughs> there's not too much you can change with that so I figured well I'll just do it kind of a silver look just to signify that it's, you know, my version, a new version of her. And in the movies, like, yeah, she was, you know, it was all just kind of like neutral black, dark gray, like gunmetal type stuff with the red highlights. Yeah, at one point I had been doing versions of her in like a, almost like a track suit, <laughs> but that probably would have been just a, a little too uh, 
Add in a little too hipstery or something. Okay, so I have the basic colors and the line drawing. And then, depending, a lot of times, especially in the actual comics, if it's a certain time of day or you know a certain mood I need to set, I go over it with a color wash on the multiply layer and gonna do like kind of like an orangey thing and I just go through hold on. and this also gives me like the the nice watercolor texture over the whole thing so even though it's digital and very flat colors I'm adding the texture so it will start showing through on certain points and it will just give it more of a natural media look. And once again, this is uh, one of the Kyle Webster digital watercolor brushes I'm using. I believe it's the, for all you Photoshop people out there, you know, asking about the, the exact brushes, I think this is the, um, the 175 broad watercolor brush that I tend to use quite a bit. Okay, and then maybe darken that up a little bit. Okay, and then that way it's yeah it it looks very textury you know a little messy but after this what I can do is use this especially in the background I'll fill all of all of this um, background area with more opaque stuff and this is essentially in like almost like a traditional underpainting but just digital form. Start doing, start darkening up her suit. And start kind of uh, doing shading and modeling at this point. And blacks can get tricky. You, you want to try to, you know, because nothing's going to be, you know, fully black unless you're doing some really stylized piece of art. So you want to try to try to get the shapes in there as much as you can while still keeping the feeling of it being a very dark suit. There. Work on her face a little here. Lighten it up a bit. And this is just a brush set at like a kind of a pressure sensitive opacity. And that way I can kind of just use it almost like a paintbrush in terms of thick and thin paint. You can cover up the drawing just a little bit. Because I'll be able to see that afterwards. Okay, 
and that's what I was saying about you know not worrying too much about the exactness of the drawing because uh, in my style def at least um, in terms of the way I work I'll do a lot of secondary drawing over the painting to kind of give it that sketching style on top of the actual colors. And I did, yeah, I mean, I loved the red hair on her. It was such a, a great way to add like graphic flourishes um, because it stood out so much from, you know, the rest of her costume. And, you know, I always loved just kind of like, oh, when I uh, could do more of the background, I'll show you, I, I would always add some airbrushed softness to her hair just to kind of give it a dreamy look because it was comic books. I wasn't, you know, working in any kind of photo real style and was just trying to make it look fancy and stylized. Um, yeah, I mean, a big influence, especially, you know, coming from an illustration background, not really drawing in a traditional comic way. Uh, you know, a lot of the stuff I I was I gravitated to when I first really got back into comics was like you know Bill Sienkiewicz's Electra Assassin, um, you know all the Kent Williams painted stuff that he was doing like Wolverine and Havoc the Meltdown series and Alex Ross Marvels was a giant you know fave of mine and Simon Bisley Judgment on Gotham like anything like painted and illustrative type style I was you know really what like caught my eye so you know my style's heavily influenced by all of that just trying to make it kind of artsy and different okay um yeah so I would the shadows I'm just going through on a multiply layer and just the, you know, you can use like cooler or warmer colors depending on the type of shadows you want. Or you can just use um, a great little shortcut if you need it is just do a multiply layer and then just kind of go over with that same color. And you get, you know, great, great looking shadows without having to constantly be uh, opening your palette. trying to match the perfect shadow color. Add some color, warmth to our nose there. Let's do our lips. Finish up her eyes here. Oh, nostrils is eyes and up her mouth a bit and then I'll do some stuff uh, do some quick highlights usually do highlights with a screen layer. And like the multiply layer that just, it's a shortcut for just getting uh, 
complementary colors off of it without having to specifically pick out the, the different shades and hues. Ones there, and yes, this is just <laughs> this is a quick and dirty internet version. So there's yeah, it's please don't ask me what kind, what exact type of pistol she's using or anything. I'm just it's uh, Black Widow guns today. Those highlights. Would always just kind of do like a dreamy red glow to her hair. Then we'll rough out just a quick, uh, just some background color here, just to kind of tie it all together real quick at the end. And then this way you can kind of just, for like a painterly background, you have the ender painting that can kind of show through. Use some little speed lines. And we'll throw in some little blam blams. Some I always like doing the lettered uh, effects. And that should about do it. Like I said, this is just kind of the, the rough, quick version of my version of Black Widow, but I hope you've enjoyed it. And I will be doing, after this, I'll be on Instagram Live on the Marvel feed, um, doing another Black Widow piece, but uh, more of like a kind of a waist up bus shot and if you want to watch that I will be starting that around four o'clock so hope you enjoyed it and um, yes uh, follow me on Instagram at Phil Noto and uh, Twitter which I'm not on too much but I do have an account uh, also Phil Noto and um, yes have a good day stay safe out there people Thank you. No, oh, gotta sign it. There we go.